Hey there, I'm Jeff Noble and welcome back to my channel. Did you know that FASD is two and a half times more prevalent than autism? Yeah, let that sink in. But here's the kicker. Despite its prevalence, there's a shocking lack of awareness about it. And as someone who's been in the trenches as a caregiver and educator, learning about FASD was a game changer for me. And it can be for you too. Whether you're a parent or an educator or just a curious cat, you're in the right place and you've struck gold by being here. So grab a snack and let's roll. Let's get our bearings before we get right into it. We have to have a starting definition of FASD, and for that, I will be using the definition that was developed by the Canada FASD Research Network. CanFASD, as they're known, is a network that unites experts to tackle this intricate disability. Full disclosure here, I've had the pleasure of working with them and being paid by CanFASD in the past. I'm not getting paid to mention them here or encouraged to cite their research, although, they can call me. Here's the definition we'll be breaking down today. FASD stands for Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder. It's a lifelong disability that affects the brain and body of people who are exposed to alcohol in the womb. Each person with FASD has both strengths and challenges and will need special support to help them succeed with many different parts of their daily lives. The rest of this video is all about breaking down that definition. We'll discuss what it means for FASD to be a lifelong disability, how it affects the brain and body, the impact of prenatal alcohol exposure, and the importance of recognizing both strengths and challenges. By the end of this video, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of what FASD is, and you'll be equipped to keep the conversation going with other people. Got it? Good? Good, great, grand, wonderful. No yelling on the bus. All right, let's peel back the layers on the first part of our definition. FASD is a lifelong disability. Now, when I say lifelong, I am not talking about a life sentence. I'm talking about a life journey, one that's unique and filled with challenges and its own set of adventures. The families I work with often hear, oh, they'll grow out of it, or it's just a phase. Let's clear the air. FASD is a neurological condition. That means the brain wiring is different due to prenatal alcohol exposure. It's not about willpower, it's about wiring. So this isn't about bad parenting or being a bad kid. It's all about understanding neuroscience and it's about understanding the brain. A nurse in New Zealand once told me, FASD is from womb to tomb. That's a powerful way to put it and it's spot on. But here's the good news. Recognizing FASD as a lifelong journey allows us to tailor the right kind of support throughout someone's life. And when that happens, they don't just survive, they thrive. I mean, they could really do well. I know some individuals on the spectrum that do some really kick-ass things. Imagine you're teaching someone to ride a bike and you take away the training wheels too soon. They're going to fall, right? It's the same with FASD. When we see progress, it's tempting to pull away supports, but that's when they need them the most. So if things go south, let's see what happens when we take away the puppy. It's not a failure on their part, it's ours. And it's also a learning opportunity for all of us. So let's remember, FASD is a lifelong disability. That means lifelong supports, and that's not a bad thing. In fact, most successful people you know probably have a good team behind them. So if successful people could do it, why can't individuals with FASD have their own team so they could be even more successful? Let's tackle the next part of our definition. FASD affects the brain and body. Now, this might sound like a sweeping statement, but you best believe it's laser focused. Think of the brain like the engine of a car. If one part isn't working right, the whole car struggles. But here's the catch. Every car's engine is different. Some might have a faulty spark plug, while others might have a timing belt issue. According to a study published in The Lancet by Dr. Popova and her team, there are a staggering 428 co-concurring conditions that could occur alongside FASD. Yep, you heard that right, 428. These can range from mental and behavior issues to sensory sensitivities. So when we say it affects the brain and body, we're talking about a whole range of challenges and needs. But there is a silver lining. Knowing the range of conditions that can co-occur with FASD allows us to tailor the support each individual needs. Just because we know one individual with FASD means we just know one individual. We have to tailor it and that's excellent and effective. And that, my friends, is how we turn challenges into triumph. 
steps. Now let's move on to the part of the definition that often raises eyebrows and sometimes even judgment. That part is who were exposed to alcohol in the womb. Now, before we go any further, let's clear the air. This is a no judgment zone, no. First of all, how does this exposure happen? Simply put, when a pregnant individual consumes alcohol, it could pass through the placenta into the developing fetus. Alcohol is water soluble. The effects vary and can lead to FASD, a neurodevelopmental disability. Now let's talk about birth moms. We love them here at FASD Success, but often they bear the brunt of societal judgment According to a prevention conversation article, many factors could lead to alcohol consumption during a pregnancy, including lack of awareness, they didn't know they were pregnant, family trauma, and addictions, and even some societal pressures. The key takeaway here is compassion over judgment. We have to love our birth moms. They play just as a vital role here as anybody else. Also, let's not sideline the dads. According to CanFASD, a father's drinking habits can influence the vulnerability of a fetus to prenatal alcohol exposure. Dads play a pivotal role, not only in supporting moms, but also in the healthy development of their babies. So it's a team effort every step of the way. So as we move forward in understanding FASD, let's remember, it's a condition that requires lifelong support, but it also comes with unique strengths and skills. And for the birth mothers out there, know that you are not alone. Support and understanding are key, and that starts with us. All right, let's unpack the final piece of our FASD definition puzzle. Will need special support. Now I can already hear some of you saying, well, isn't that just enabling? People tell me I'm enabling my kid all the time. Well, let me tell you one, if you're a caregiver and someone says you're enabling, that's awesome, it means you're doing right. It's far from enabling, actually. It's all about making life accessible for everyone. Picture this, you've got two ways to get into a building, a staircase and a ramp. The stairs is a breeze for some, but a mountain for others. The ramp, it's the universal VIP entrance, it's open to all. Accommodations are like those ramps. They make the day-to-day -day grind manageable for individuals with FASD and their families. And let's be real, we make these kinds of adjustments for many other disabilities. Think wheelchair ramps, sign language, interpreters, seeing eye dog, braille. These are all ways that we make society more inclusive. So why not do the same for individuals with FASD? And there you have it, folks. We've just broken down FASD piece by piece and hopefully provided some insight along the way. But remember, the conversation doesn't stop here. If this video hit a chord or you just dig the vibe, give that like button a tap, share it around, and if you're feeling it, hit subscribe. More knowledge, more understanding means more progress. Let's keep rolling together. Thanks so much for joining me. You are amazing. Until then, talk soon. Bye.